Hello and welcome to the RM Network, where today we are going to be talking about the series premiere of The Mandalorian. This was without a doubt my most anticipated TV show for the rest of the year, and the series premiere just dropped on Disney+, Plus, and I'm going to dive full in-depth spoilers everything, because I'm going to be doing this episode by episode as they come out, and I just kind of assume that if you're watching this video, you've seen the episode. So we're going to go full in-depth spoilers, everything I noticed, etc. And I am so excited to talk about this episode because this actually had a lot more going on than I expected for a pilot episode. This episode starts out with that whole brawl in the bar where the Quarren gets chopped in half by the door, yada yada yada. We find out that he's actually looking for another bounty on there, which was a great way to show just how badass the Mandalorian already is. And then he takes it back to Carl Weathers' character, who I believe was named Griff Tambin. And he basically says, hey, I got this off-the-book job for you, which takes him to an ex-Imperial played by Warner Herzog, whose character's name I do not know. If I find out, I'll leave it below, but I'm not entirely sure. Who sends him on this very secret bounty in trade for Mandalorian Steel. I forget the name of it. It's like burlesque, something like that. Uh, very important to the Mandalorians. And what I really appreciated and something that I wasn't expecting was just how many Mandalorians we got already. We see that there is this little colony or a little underground village, I guess, full of Mandalorians living on this planet. And I was honestly baffled. I was like, oh, okay, so we're diving right into this. And as he goes on this bounty, he meets Nick Nolte's character, who I believe is an Ugnaught. I still don't know his name, but he agrees to help him ride a blur. And that scene in general, I thought it kind of set the tone for this entire show. While it is going to be pretty serious, the Mandalorian is someone who seems like that he's actually pretty funny, but he still focuses on the job. He's determined, but he just has some wit about him. And when he does get to this village eventually that houses his bounty, you know, there's this big old action scene about trying to get there where he actually meets up with Taika Waititi's IG-11. And what surprised me about this was how mundane IG-11 was, I guess. I assumed he'd be a much quick talker, and that's probably just because Taika Waititi voices him. But they eventually find the bounty, they decide to team up, and it ends up being one of Yoda's species. It's a little baby, it's 50 years old, but that was such a surprise to me. It was shocking, something I just didn't expect in general, and I can't wait to see where they go with it. Right before the end of the episode, IG-11 is about to terminate it, but then the Mandalorian kills IG-11, which honestly, that doesn't surprise me given that we didn't see any more of him than kind of that one shot where he's in that action throughout the whole trailer. But I am a little shocked that they killed him off this early. I thought that he'd at least last a few episodes. And who knows, he might end up coming back as like another droid still voiced by Taika. I don't know, we'll see. But what's important here is the bounty. And the fact that it is one of Yoda's species, I am so curious to see where we're going with this. Why is this little baby so important? Now to get to a little bit more of a technical aspect, I thought the performances were fantastic throughout the board. Um, I already talked a little bit about Pedro Pascal, but Nick Nolte, Carl Weathers, Taika Waititi, Warner Herzog, I thought they all did fantastic jobs, and I can't wait to see where their characters go from here. But one of the things that really stuck out to me was the phenomenal score. It is done by Ludwig Goransson, who did the score for Creed, Black Panther, and honestly, there is just something so upbeat about it it's techno it's western it's star wars and it's just something that we haven't seen in a star wars score before that i was so excited to see and i think that this could be one of the best star wars scores going forward depending on how the rest of the season is also the effects just in general are gorgeous whether practical or cg i thought that obviously it's a big star wars budget so more than likely it's going to look good but i did not expect it to look this good just a few details I wanted to rattle off that I noticed before I head out for this episode. Uh, the fried Kowaki and monkey lizard, which I would never try. That seems absolutely disgusting. Uh, we see a gonk droid, and it makes its little gonk, gonk, gonk sounds, as well as the mention of Life Day. So Life Day is canon once more. 
I am very happy about that. But that is all I have for you guys. Let me know in the comments what were your thoughts on the series premiere of The Mandalorian. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Like I said, we are going to be reviewing it episode by episode as they come out. So make sure you hit that little bell icon. It will notify you when new videos of ours come up. Make sure you follow the RM Network on Instagram and Twitter at the RM Network. And make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Rich underscore Mahalski. Thank you so much for watching this video and any video we put out here. And may the force be with you, always.